is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to this channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 acura rdx courtesy of bobby ray hall acura in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so i am in this one today because my first car was a white acura much like the one i am in today take a guess at what acura you think that was in the comments section below but also you do get two years or 24,000 miles of complimentary maintenance with this one as well and there is one major change for the 2024 rdx so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 rdx first one being the base starting at forty four thousand fifty dollars technology for forty six thousand seven hundred a spec for forty nine seven advanced for fifty one thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars a spec advanced then being the one we are in today starting at fifty three thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the rdx is going to be the same powering the beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four-cylinder putting out 272 horsepower at 6500 rpm 280 pound-feet of torque coming in at 1600 rpm power sent to all four wheels this is newly standard by the way for 2024 there's no more front wheel drive available for the rdx through a super handling all-wheel drive system that power being sent to the ground through a 10-speed automatic with paddle shifter zero to 60 time approximately 6.2 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 21 in the city 27 and then on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel. But said that before we do any kind of fun acceleration or power shifter test here in the RDX, did want to mention to you guys the drive modes. It's labeled dynamic mode. It's located front and center, just above the shift buttons there. Those modes will include normal, comfort, sport, and snow, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, the steering sensitivity, ambient lighting, engine sound, and suspension settings. So probably the very most I've ever seen a vehicle adjust. So anyways, now that I've got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straight away let's put this thing here to the test and let's see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right this is going to be um this is going to be an interesting one this is an acceleration test in the snow here with the paddle shifters so <laughs> three two one go Woo <laughs> Oh, I gotta be honest. I feel like a rally racer. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Super handling all-wheel drive. Put to the test, baby. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Let's take it out of the manual shift mode there, which, by the way, there is a manual shift mode. You just press the D slash S button, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, paddle shifters are pretty darn quick. I got no issues with that, and uh, obviously the acceleration test was kind of a flop because, you know, we're just accelerating in snow here, but yeah it held its ground man like nothing wrong with that whatsoever this is super handling in the snow all-wheel drive so yeah absolutely nothing wrong with that so again acceleration test i can't really do but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so up front you will find 12.4 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.2 inch solid rear discs as far as the braking feel goes since there's nobody behind us here it's on the softer side of things. <laughs> no doubt about that. Definitely a soft braking feel, so it's fine. This is an SUV. I don't expect it to have a firm braking feel like a sports car or anything like that, but having said that, wouldn't mind it if they firmed that up just a little bit for me, but then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars, but for the advanced trims, you also get an adaptive damping suspension. So since we have an advanced trim, we got that. So essentially what that is, is it monitors each shock absorber individually, not only adjusting to the road imperfections, giving you a smoother ride, but it also tightens up that suspension during heavy cornering, giving you better handling. So essentially it gives you the best of both worlds. So if you want the best ride quality in the RDX and you want the best handling as well, 
go with one of the advanced trim levels. I'll just put it that way. So far, my short little test drive here today, the ride quality has been 100% perfectly fine. So I definitely wouldn't mind taking this thing on a long road trip. As far as steering feel goes, it depends upon the drive mode that you put it in. So let me put it back in sport. Yeah, it is a noticeable difference. It instantly points you in the direction that you want to go in that sport driving mode, a heavier weight to the steering, but then you put it back in normal and it definitely loosens up the steering feel again. It has something for everyone. I'll just put it that way. And there's nothing wrong with that. And touching on cabin noise as we are kind of cruising over some snow right now, um, other than some of the snow noise here, that's been perfectly fine as well. Typically with luxury automakers, you're not going to have any issues there. There is an acoustic laminated front windshield that does come standard on all trim levels across the board. So you got to appreciate that. That's going to contribute to the more serene cabin that we have here in the RDX. So love that. And touching on visibility, uh, as far as rear visibility goes, I can see perfectly fine out the back. I should probably take the plastic off this rear headrest, but yeah, I can see perfectly fine out the back. So again, no issues. Rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the advanced trim levels. And there is also a head up display projecting your speed, speed limit and safety features up onto your windshield. I will say you can't really see it with sunglasses, but if I take these off, it is definitely in my line of sight. So I do like that that is there as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Acura RDX. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2024 Acura RDX finished in platinum white pearl. In case you were curious of our exact exterior color name that we had on this one here today. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the RDX is made. Taking a look at the VIN. First character is the number five, indicating that the RDX is built and assembled here in the US, specifically Ohio, in case you were curious. But let's go ahead and start up front. You get a massive Acura front logo found in that front grille. Probably the biggest logo I have seen on any other vehicle that I have ever reviewed. That is just a massive logo. But to the sides, dual eye LED headlights do come standard for all trim levels across the board. They definitely look good. They do come with LED daytime running lights. You get the automatic feature. You get automatic high beams as well. Also though, LED fog lights for the A spectrum level and up. You guys can see them down at the very bottom there. That's definitely very nice. And of course, to the corners there, you will find front air curtains, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics. But that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, you're either going to find chrome or gloss black upper window trim, dependent upon the trim level that you go with. Of course, there is a floating roof line on the C pillar there, differentiating the roof line from the rest of the body. Rear privacy glass does come standard. You're going to find some A spec badging on those front fenders. You guys could probably see that for the A spec trims, of course. Chrome accenting found on the door or gloss black, again, dependent upon the trim level that you go with. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals, but also all trim levels are gonna get the reverse gear tilt down feature. So when you put it in reverse, it's gonna tilt those mirrors down so you're less likely to run over a bicycle or a skateboard or whatever the case. LED puddle lights coming with the advanced trim levels. That's pretty cool. And also the mirrors will be power folding for the advanced trim levels as well. Then take a look down to the wheel setup, 19 by eight inch alloys for the base and technology trims, but then 20 by eight inch alloys for the A-spec trim level end up. So that's what you guys are looking at, but pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, body colored shark fin antenna, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper. Of course, you got some C-shaped LED taillights. They definitely look good. And also since they're LED, it's added illumination at night there. Got the super handling all wheel drive badging down there as well. And then just below it all, kind of going to find some gloss black rear diffuser. I think that looks pretty darn good. But my favorite part, the exhaust outlets are actually going to differ dependent upon the trim level that you go with. So you're going to find dual exhaust outlets with satin chrome tips coming standard, but with the A spec like we have today, they're going to be massive. Those are some very large exhaust outlets, especially for an SUV. I think they look so dang good. But anyways, having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All 
Alright, so now since we are around to the back of this one, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate that does come standard. However, for the advanced trim levels, you do get a hands-free power tailgate. So all you need to do is just kick your foot underneath if your hands are full. So I do like that. But once opened up, car capacity comes in at 29.5 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 58.9 cubic feet. There were actually some levers in the cargo area to actually fold down those rear seats that was convenient cargo lending can be found back there there's a 12 volt power outlet for the advanced trim levels do have some chrome plated tie down anchors and if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you're going to find a massive amount of in-floor storage did not expect to see that much in this size of an suv so Acura did very well with that but then make your way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 38 inches even for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there there is a rear center armrest with cup holders coming standard there was some rear ventilation coming standard as well usb charging ports of course and then heated rear seats are going to come on the advanced trim level so you get to spoil the rear passengers a little bit but then making our way up to the front seats 12-way power adjustable front seats with power lumbar does come standard heated front seats also coming standard i've had them on this whole drive today ventilated front seats for the a spec trim level and up milano premium leather for the technology and advanced trim levels however for the a spec you're going to get a leather suede combo so the black portion in the middle is going to be the suede the red is going to be the leather 16 way power adjustable front seats for the advanced trim levels and that comes with power thigh support and power side bolsters as well that's nuts overall as far as seat comfort goes definitely plenty comfortable on my short little test drive here today and that's due in part because the seams are vertical you guys know i've griped on that before if you do horizontal seams sometimes it creates awkward pressure points but with the vertical seams like we have today seating was plenty adjustable and like i said power side bolsters and power thigh support it doesn't get any better than that but then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for all trim levels it is going to be a flat bottom for the a spec trim level only and then heated for the a spec and advanced trim levels as well so that is definitely nice it's something i haven't turned on yet so i'm going to go ahead and press that because it's on the steering wheel itself there on the left side but then make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key got your acura logo on the one side when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate and then the engine hold button that's the remote start which comes standard on the advanced trim levels only but then it is all keyless entry with a push button start for all trim levels so all i'm going to do here simply put my foot on the brake and press that silver engine start button located just by the driver's right knee and so what started up this is one of my favorite parts here because of the gauges what you have here essentially is rsx throwback gauges how do i know this because that was my first car that's the answer i had a white 2003 rsx tachometers on your left speedometers on your right i love the look of it i feel like my gauges were a little whiter and these are more of a silver hue but still love them but digital screen front and center to control what is on that there are steering wheel mounted controls actually found on the right side of the steering wheel to control what is up there there's digital speedometer how many miles you have left until you hit empty uh, navigation information oil life meter tire pressure of each individual tire the list goes on so pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges there but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality a panoramic roof comes standard believe it or not on every single trim level across the board so you gotta love that you do get homelet controls throughout the three different ground garage doors found at the bottom portion of our frameless rear view mirror that comes standard for all trim levels as well wireless phone charger coming standard for all trim levels as well and that's located kind of in this hidden area just underneath of all of the shift buttons you got a lot of room down there actually so wireless phone charger yes but you got more storage down there too a 12 volt power outlet so good bit going on down there overhead sunglass holder up top here coming standard as well dual zone climb control also coming standard you do have ambient lighting with 27 different themes for the technology trim level and up and overall the interior quality was absolutely amazing there's so many cool little texturized finishes and suede finishes as well take for example just above the passenger side glove box you have this black suede finish with red contrast stitching which by the way continues onto the doors that suede finish and red contrast stitching as well love that just behind the shift buttons here um, just in front of the center armrest 
you have this nice silver finish and it's texturized as well. So also liked that. You have aluminum speaker covers for the ELS Studio 3D sound system, which we're gonna test out here in a little bit. So that is very high quality as well. It's just so many high quality finishes to this thing. I absolutely love it. And then tons of space just in front of that center armrest. You have a USB charging port, which is charging my uh, other battery for my camera. <laughs> a couple cup holders as well. That's kind of hard to say, but anyways, interior quality, like I said, is absolutely wonderful. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. It is a 10.2 inch infotainment screen. It is not touch screen because it's a heck of a reach if it were to be, but the way it's controlled is by using the touchpad controller and buttons located just behind the shifter. So this kind of style, in my opinion, is a little outdated and a little hard to use, quite honestly. I wouldn't have minded if they somehow made that a touch screen because it is a little bit difficult to use. It's one of those things I'm sure you will get used to it over time, but for me, being that I don't drive this car on a regular basis here, it's just a little bit to get used to. And like I said, you should get used to it, but Bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard. You do get wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, so you don't always find that. I like that. Factory navigation system coming on the technology trim level and up. You can check out your climate control settings up there as well, along with your radio information. So, as I said, we will be testing out the sound system. So you got two different sound systems here. You get a nine speaker sound system with the bass trim level, but then for the technology trim level and up, you're gonna find a 16 speaker ELS studio sound system with 710 watts and aluminum speaker cover. So you gotta love that. So having said that, let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. I did a little extended sound system test there. Like, uh, I'm only going to show a portion of it, obviously, but that wasn't just a good sound system. That was incredible. Like, that is an incredible sound system. The bass was intense. Like, that is the best bass you can hear these days. And it wasn't too much. It wasn't rumbling, like, rattling anything, but it was intense, man. The clarity was crystal clear. I've said this before. I've tested... I know at least 850 cars, no, 800, over 800 cars, something like that. ELS Studio Sound System has become my favorite sound system after all of those cars that I've tested in the Integra and in the RDX. For some reason, the MDX doesn't sound as good. Maybe it's the, um, maybe it's because of the size of the vehicle, I don't know. But in the RDX and in the Integra, the ELS Studio Sound System is my favorite. It is amazing. If you like music, this will take you to a different world. It's, it's insane. Anyways, last thing I wanted to mention you guys on that infotainment screen is, of course, when you do put the RDX in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Also, a panoramic view monitor for the advanced trim levels, which as always is going to lead us into safety. And so, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS, that pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, temperature monitoring system, but also coming standard Acura watch. And yes, every single company has a special name for their advanced safety features, that's Acura's, but collision mitigation braking system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, road departure mitigation system, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, traffic sign recognition, and a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. Then if we were to go with the technology trim level enough, that's gonna add to that front and rear parking sensors. And so, overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, first thing I gotta mention on this one, sound system is incredible. That is the only word I can use to describe it because it will blow your mind. I'm telling you, you guys, I have a little bit of experience with testing out sound systems. This one is brilliant, but love the exhaust look as well. So hopefully the exhaust clip turned out pretty good. I'm not sure how it's gonna sound because I haven't played it back yet, but the look is my kind of look. This is exactly what I would be looking for. Great handling as well, especially in the snow. This thing held its own in the snow. We actually passed an accident. Unfortunately, I did check to see if they were okay, but uh, this thing held its ground, man. This thing is brilliant in the snow. Absolutely no issues there. Gauges, although some people might say they're boring. I love them because they remind me of my old RSX. So 
I really can't find anything to, to knock this one for. Minus maybe the fact that I don't know how the reliability is going to be on a turbocharged four cylinder. Um, maybe it's proven, maybe it isn't at this point. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you have an RDX and how long you have had it for, how many miles you have on it. But anyways, that about rounds out this review, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, feel free to follow me on Facebook and all those social medias so you can see different spy shots of these vehicles before they actually get to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe to the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that's what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.